they're new lovely people, the feeder setups, it really couldn't be simpler. It's really nice and easy. 10 foot bomb rods for both, nice soft rods uh, and 0.22 mainline. The reason for 0.22 mainline is there's some great big fish in here um, and you know your tackle does need to be quite robust. We've got a sort of biggish 3000 reel on, you know it's obviously the lines right loaded up to the spool so that it's nice and smooth when we're casting. So 0.22 equates to roughly about eight pounds, something like that. Incidentally, the tips, um, I always tend to use sort of a, a lighter tip. I've only got sort of like half an ounce on this one. Uh, and that's because when you start getting sort of fish coming into your swim, if you're using too harsh a tip, the, the fish will pick up on it as they're running into the line. And that's when you get them spooking out your peg, you'll get them bow waves. So by using a softer tip, you can pick up on all them line bites and keep slackening off. And generally they just tend to slam it round. Right, so coming to the business end. The first thing I've done is I've put on one of them little sort of rubber rubber stops. You can get in on that, Rich. Now all they are is these, I'll, sh I'll show you more when I, when I do the bomb setup. I'm doing the method setup first. Uh, I'll show you more when I'm doing the, uh, the bomb one. It's just one of them. Basically you put your line through there and then you pull the rubber, the rubber stop onto it. It's dead nice and easy. So that on first and that stops sort of like your method going all the way up to your rod end, which is not what you want. So get our method, a free running one, a free running or elasticated. I'm pretty sure you can use elasticated ones on here, but it's personal preference. I just prefer the free running ones are nice and easy. Plus the fish doesn't get tethered, which is nice. All about fish welfare, aren't we? So I'm waffling, aren't I? Put the line through. It goes through. Come on, get through. I see it and thread that all the way through. Oh, it's not going through, Rich. Right, we'll get it through that bit. We'll take that bubble bead off first. And then that goes all the way through there. So that's sliding on our line. Put that back on. Now, there's loads of different attachments on the market. Uh, you know, there's little sort of quick stops, your swivels you can use, or you can just put a sort of like a loop in it and put your up length on that. What I prefer are these loose or quick change beads you see there you can get it on that ridge the sort of like a swivel right at the top to eliminate all your you know your hook hook spin ups and all that there's a little bit of silicon tube in there your hook length goes on that and that closes down over it it really is a quick and effective way uh, to get your hook length on so line goes through the swivel and then obviously the method can hide the loop so i like to make quite a big loop and what i want to do is double that line over make one single loop in it, then I'm gonna put that swivel back through that big loop, sort of two or three times. I, I like to go go through it three times just to make it, make it a little bit stronger. So, as with all knots, make sure you moisten it. Don't need to make that loop small or anything, because I say it's getting hidden inside the method. Pull that down nice and tight, and we'll get some scissors on it, and trim that back, like so. Come on, get off. That's it, trimmed off. And then that method, go over that swivel and then that'll get trapped in there. It's a lovely fit. There's actually two different sizes uh, to these Caluso swivels. There's a smaller one which I'll use for the bomb and there's a slightly larger one. You can see there that gets trapped in nice, perfect, nice, nice fit in it. And then put the method lid back on and then I bring the rubber stop back down. And then we put our hook length on. I've, I've actually got can you believe it, Rich? I've got some hook lengths tied up. Only about three, but we've got some done. Now, hook length wise, I'll always use, summer or winter, it doesn't matter, I'll always use a minimum of 0.20. When you're feeder fishing, you know, bomb, uh, traditional feeder, um, cage feeder, method feeder, I don't think it makes a blind bit of difference what size hook length you use. You, you want a complete confidence that when you hook a fish, generally it's gonna be a bigger fish, you want to make sure you're getting them in. So it just gives you that much confidence. And I don't go any lighter than a 0.20 because I think it's irrelevant because obviously your line's on the bottom, it doesn't matter. Now the beauty of these, that just hooks on there. We'll bring that back up and then pull that rubber sleeve down and that's it, fixed, fixed in place. Nice and easy, good to go. Now, vary the length of your hook length. Sometimes if the fish are a little bit cuter, a bit sort of like clearer water, them planes are getting rich, how dare they? Uh, if it's a bit clearer of water, you might want to experiment with a longer hook length, sort of six, maybe eight inches, something like that. But I tend to go for most of mine would be sort of three to four inch. Hook wise, um, I don't pretty much use anything but the Guri QM ones. Uh, I love them. Size sort of 14, 12s, and 10s, depending on what bait I'm on. We're on sort of like changing between eight mil pellet uh, and some of these little tiny boilies. So I'm going to be changing 
sort of like between them, so I want to be on a, a 12 hook, a nice big, big hook. Once it's on, it just gives you loads of confidence. Right, so that's a method one done, nice and easy. The next one is the bomb. Again, nothing complicated what we'll do. Got exactly the same setup, 10 foot rod on, nice soft tip and point 22 main line. The first thing I'm gonna do is put on the swivel. Nice and easy, and obviously this allows you to change really quickly between bomb sizes because we'll come to it later on, but I think bomb sizes make a big difference, you know, changing between sort of a heavier one so the fish really hook themselves to a light one to sort of like looking to catch fish through the water when you know sort of like they're coming on for that waggler. So swivels on first. Next thing I'm gonna do is put one of these rubber float stops on. So as I said, I'd show you from last time, didn't I? So basically all we're doing with this get on it mate, is your line goes through the loop and all we're doing is pulling that rubber bead over onto the line and that's fixed on the line that. All that's doing for me is acting like a cushion. So this swivel, when I've done the knots in a sec, that swivel's coming back onto there so it's just nice and neat, nice and tidy, it's not getting tangled. Right, so at this point here, what a lot of anglers will do, again, they'll put sort of like one of them connectors on or one of them, you know, the uh, quick, quick change uh, connectors that they've got here. What I like to do is, uh, again, give myself complete confidence that I know I'm not getting tangled. So I'll, I'll do a bit of what's called twizzled line, which is I'll, I'll twist the line with my fingers so it's going in opposite directions. And I want it sort of roughly, sort of four or five inches from it. So it acts like a bit of a boom away from the bomb or the feeder. So I've got a smaller one of these swivels, one of them quick change swivels again. That goes on the line. And then what I'll do, I'll get out a little bit of line and then what I'm going to do is start in opposite directions, twisting that line. You're getting on that, mate. And twist that line so you can see it's going, it's forming that, that sort of boom for me. It's a bit fiddly, but, you know, it's like anything, isn't it? You just get used to it. So once that's formed, I say I want it sort of four or five inches, a bit longer, like that. I'm going to trap that. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put... Put a loop in the line i'm going to go through two times and come back to sort of four or five inches like that so you can see that acting like a bit of a boom yeah so we know when we cast in we're not going to get in any tangles whatsoever I'll trim that off again with the scissors that's again we don't need that pull that rubber bead back so it cushions against that and then bring the swivel back and then we're going to put a bomb i'm going to start off with sort of a heavier bomb this is sort of uh, between sort of half an ounce and three quarters, but I have got some real small ones. You can see like the action of that. When you're casting in and when it's in place, it, it, it's that boom away from like your feeder or your bomb. So you know you're not getting in a tangle. Now, again, vary the size of your hook lengths, you know. Some anglers prefer to use a longer hook length, uh, you know, drag the sort of like the bait back into the, your loose feed area. Personally, I like to use a shorter one so that when the fish home in it, you're seeing that bite straight away. So I'm going for a 10 inch hook length on this one. Again, 0.20 to a 12 QM one with a little band on a hair rig. That just goes on there, that folds down and that bomb will come back to it. So that is your finished rig. Nice and easy, let me hold that up for you. So you see when that's on the bottom, obviously, if that's acting like a boom, that sinks into the sill and that's lying on top of the sill. So when you get a bite, it's on straight away. And we're using, yeah, as I said before, experiment with the size of the bombs. Sometimes the fish are a bit shy, that they'll want to feel that sort of like, that, that weight of that feed and they hook themselves against it. The bites are amazing on it. It's absolutely ridiculous. And we'll, we'll go through it in a sec, but what I tend to do is I, I, won't, I won't use a drag. I certainly won't use a clip. I, I just used to, you know, usually have me sort of like anti-reverse off, so when you get a bite, nothing's going to get snapped and your rod's not going to get pulled in. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's go and put it into practice and catch some fishies. Okay, loading the feeder. Um, there's quite a few different ways of loading the feeder, to be fair. First thing I'm going to do, obviously, is put the hook bait on. Now, I've got loads of, like, different options available. I've got little tiny yellow broilers, I've got little white ones, pink ones. I've got these little soft squidgy ones just acting like a bit of a softy pellet. Um, it's all about personal preference. First thing I'm going to start off on though is just a, a normal banded 8 mil pellet. So we'll put one of them on and then we'll get that feeder loaded and get it cast in and then snarled up in them great big ones. So when you're putting the pellet on make sure that band's smooth all the way around that pellet yeah because sometimes when you put them on without them bander baits um, it can sort of like fold over just make sure it's smooth all the way around it. 
So that's that on. Now the beauty of these hybrids, this is why I love them so much, there's no, no need for moulds or anything. Literally, all I'm doing with that is putting it in the ground bait, one press, and that's me initial uh, mix on there. Now for one or two, obviously all I've got to do now is put the bait into that and I could cast it in like that. But what I tend to do, I'll put that initial layer on a bit harder, you know, to keep some bait on, and then I'll just put another little layer on and just mould it round a little bit softer. Because it's only shallow here at Bass and it's sort of like three and a half, four foot of the absolute most where we're fishing on these pegs. So when we cast in, I want that initial ground bait mix to sort of come off fairly quickly. So it's going down a bit of an area to attract fish in. And obviously once that feeder gets down to the bottom, that's going to break out. Fish will start pecking at it. Nom, 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 nom. See the bait, nail it, and it's game on. It's such a brilliant way of fishing. So what I'm going to be doing whilst I'm on the method is I'm going to be constantly, well, constantly saying every sort of 30 seconds to a minute, I'm going to be catapulting in sort of five to eight pellets, five to eight, eight mil pellets. Now... We'll come to it more when we're waggler fishing, but it's it's kind of important that when you're catapulting them in, you're not overexerting yourself. Um, reason being is then pellets are going to go over too big an area. You'll never get them absolutely bang on unless every single pellet that you had was uniform. Um, so just just pay a bit of attention to how you catapult them in. Basically, when you're at full stretch, you just want to sort of leave your arm there. Don't sort of follow through cheeky and bring your arm back round because that's going to spread your pellets out over too big an area. When I'm coming onto the bomb and pellet, incidentally, I'll feed first and then cast into it because I want it to be sort of accurate, you know, cast into obviously where the feed's going in. But with a method, it's a little bit different. All your baits in that little compact area, the fish have got to come into that to feed anyway. So I've done enough waffling now, Rich, and I want to go and catch some fishes. So reload that, get it chucked in. Incidentally, when you're feeder fishing, I think it's very important your first sort of three or four casts want to be within sort of two or three minutes, just to get a little bit of bait going in. And then religiously, I've got a little watch on here. I'm going to be casting every sort of four to five minutes. Just the same as if you're on sort of like uh, fishing down the margins or fishing across on snake lakes. Four to five minutes without a bite, you come back, you bait up. It's exactly the same with the method. The, the colder the weather, the longer you leave the feeder. But obviously with it being nice and warm today, I want to keep that bait going in. And again, that's the beauty of them pellets. They're going to draw fishing. Waffling done, let's get in and catch some. Yeah! Okay, so feeders loaded. What I'm going to do first is pin my pellets out. Now, I'm coming back to the same point every time when I'm catapulting these pellets out, so they're going to be roughly in the same area, and that gives me a good reference point for when I'm casting the method out. Incidentally, because I'm in open water, I'm not clipped up. I'm just using where the pellets are landing as a reference point. Hopefully, you'll be able to get that enriched with your skills, mate. You know what I mean? Um, one of the worst things you can do is clip up in open water when the great big wobbly things and it's shallow because they'll just rip off and they can snap you in no time. So what I tend to do is I won't use um, a hard clutch or anything like that and I'll put it on backwind straight away. So when I do get that bite, the reel's going to start backwinding and then I can increase the drag as and when I want. Right, so first thing I'm going to do, ping them pellets out to roughly where I want. I'm roughly going sort of like, there's a silver car opposite of me, I'm going in line with that, so ping them out. I'm looking for where they're landing and nice and quick i'm still looking at where they're landing i'm just gonna chuck that method in right on top of it now you'll notice how that land with a little plop uh, the worst thing that can happen is when you're casting in for that feeder to sort of like really hit the water hard um obviously when you're fishing to a clip you're going to be what's called feathering the feeder so it's going to land with that nice pop and that's what you want but i've not got a clip on today so i'm just using my hands i've sunk that line as well and i'm going to wait for the bite remember your first sort of to take that anti reverse off so i've got it on back line your first sort of like two or three casts make sure they're within sort of two three minutes of each other i've got a watch here so i've tucked it in at 48 i'm going to wait until 50 before i bring it back and cast it in again but I'm going to make sure I'm keeping this bait going in. I'm looking for signs on my tip all the time, signs of liners and this, that and the other. So I know there's fish there. Already I'm getting liners, I'm getting a few little plucks and that. There could be small fish, but I'd imagine the beauty of like feeding these pellets over a big area, you're going to get a lot of fish coming in. You will get what I call drive-bys or liners. So going back to that feathering again, as I say, if you didn't sort of feather it, didn't use your hands to control that feed as it lands, it's going to go through. In fact, next time, Rich, I'm going, to, I'm going to do it without feathering it so I can show you the difference with how hard it hits the water. Basically, all that's happening, all your bait's coming off, it's the, the cash, you, you won't catch anything on it. Well, you will if you're lucky. 
Um, but it's got to land with that nice plop, so you're stopping it just before it hits the water, so it comes straight straight down, feed lands with a nice plop, and it goes straight down to the bottom. Still on 48, Rich. I thought we'd be on 50 by now. So already I can see signs of fish swirling out there, which is nice. Um, so at this stage here, you know, what I tend to do is send them first few casts, and then it's time to start experimenting with hook baits. If you're not getting, you know, if you've had sort of three or four casts over say 15 minutes with one particular bait and not had a bite, just change. Change colours, it's, it's all about the colours. They tend to like sort of, the, the more coloured the water, the more they like sort of a, a darker bait, I think. You know, sort of like your, your yellows and your oranges and your reds and things like that. The clearer the water, they like the lighter baits like yellows and whites, but you know, just experiment on the day. So we're coming up to 50 now, still pinging that bait in. This next cast, I'm going to show you without feathering it. That's it, we're on 50, so we'll bring that back. And this time, and you, you'll see now how quick you can load these uh, hybrid feeders. Really, really quick. So straighten that ground bait, layer on, pellet it over the top, and that's it, we're loaded straight away. Right, I'm not going to feather it this time, I'm just going to let it land. You watch the difference. So, cast it out, I'm just going to... See the difference with that? That's not what you want. So I'm going to bring it back and show you how it's got to be casted in. Basically, what's happening, that feeder's landing, going on top of the water, all your bait's coming out. Don't, don't even think about leaving anything like that in. Even if it's like on the money, if it's right over where we're feeding, don't think about leaving it in. All your baits come off. So what we want to do, you watch the difference. Got this loading nice and quick again. Put that down there, I'm going to ping some pellets in so I know roughly whereabouts I'm going to cast. Out there, keep an eye on them pellets where they're landing, that's it. Right, you watch the difference now with all this lands. I'm going to stop this this time. Rob back, stop it with my hands. So you saw the difference then with how it lands with that plot. That's how it's got to go in. I'm happy with that one. Happy with that one. So I'm sinking that line. Um, if, you, if your line's not sinking, you know, if you're casting out a little bit further, your line's not sinking, there's things you can do. You can put some, obviously, washing up liquid on it or a little bit of mud, anything like that to help sink your line. That's in place, so that's where I've casted that in at 10.51. Uh, so I'm going to wait till 53, bring it back, cast it in again. It's so important that you sort of like get into a routine, get into a rhythm, um, be really regimented, you know. Go off a watch. I can't stand not fishing off a watch. I've, I've, I've got to. Because um, you think sort of like four or five minutes has passed and you go to look at your watch and you're like, ten minutes might have passed. It just, time flies by in, uh, when you're fishing and certainly in match conditions as well. Yeah, I'm just getting, oh, I hear Jay strike then. He in, mate. He's snarled up and he's on the waggler. How dare he? So already I'm thinking these fish don't really want to be sort of grubbing out on the bottom. Uh, I'm getting odd liner, but I've just had a swirl come up on them pellets again. So already the fish are starting to come up in the water. As I say, it's only shallow out there, but the next thing I'll go on to is a, is a bomb. I'll change between bombs, change between the heavier one and the lighter one. But then I think most of our fish today are going to come on that waggler. So you see that tip going there, Rich? That's a liner. You know, we don't want to be striking at them. That line had been going on for about six seconds. How big is that fish, mate, swimming through? So again, you can see how often I'm feeding. Look at that, so we're on 52. I think we said 53 we were gonna bring it in, didn't we? So we've got another, another minute on that. Keep that bait going in. As I said, roughly 30 seconds to a minute. It's, it's not so much important, obviously, when you're pleasure fishing, although you wanna you know, have quick results and get fish into your peg. It's more so important when you're in match conditions that you're keeping that going in. Gotta keep that swim fed. Really important. And see what kind of like grouping I'm trying to achieve as well. I don't want to spread it out too much. It, sometimes they will do, there's nothing you can do about that. But generally it's because if you're swinging that catapult out, it's going to go, uh, bring them in too big an area. Right, 53. So I have to bring that back again. So as I say, your first sort of, you know, two, three, four casts, nice and quick. So this is our third cast now. Again, I'm just going to ping a bit of bait out so I can know it can be there or thereabout. Get it in line with that car opposite. So we're there. Bring that back. And again, I'm going to feather it. That's it, nice plop. Sink the line. 
and to reverse off and then we're in again waiting so i'll probably give it another oh oh we had a bite straight away then so what was what i was doing then i was watching the line basically where the two v's meet where the line's coming and it's sinking that line's just shot off then so it's probably a fish going through the swim uh, and that's what sunk the line but you know it's worth a strike just to see if he was on so definitely a fish there. that's worth another cast on that but the way uh the way jay's empty the next peg it looks like they're definitely on that uh that waggler but I'm going to persevere with this a little bit more. So again, get that loaded nice and quick. Pellets in. Look where they're landing. And get straight over them. It's just, just a nice reference point for you. Keep an eye where they're landing. If you think you're going over it, then just stop it. There we go. We've got to sink that line again. That's it. And get in place. So we've casted that in at 54. So what I'm going to do now, because we've had sort of like four or five casts already, there's a bit of bait going in, I'm going to leave this now until sort of 58, 59, four or five minutes per cast now. But I'm not going to stand this much longer. If I've not had anything after two more casts, you know, within sort of 10 minutes, I'm going to pick the bomb up and have a go on that. Because I know there's fish out there. There's odd and swirling, I'm getting a few liners. I just don't think they're going to be really hard on that bottom. But you won't know that until you get fishing. You know, you can make decisions quickly like that on the day. We had, a, we had a quite a good liner then. But I really don't think they want to be on that bottom. Why don't you go and have a look what Jay's doing, Rich? Should you go and have a look what Jay's doing? I think he's smashing it over there. See, already out there, this, the swirling. Right, OK, so what I thought was happening, uh, we're getting loads of signs on the method, but it's not gone round. I'll give it sort of 40 minutes. And there's loads swirl in there. So I've literally picked the bomb up, uh, put a dead light bomb on to sort of replicate two plops of light, you know, two pellets falling. Literally gone to sink the line and the rods just screamed off. So uh, I think it was the right choice in switching over to the bomb. I'll talk you through, obviously, the bomb choice when I get back. What I'm going to do, though, is put a little bit more feed out whilst I'm playing the fish. Again, don't really need to do it if you're pleasuring, but match conditions. I don't want Jamie having all the fish, do I? I want to snare some. So you notice how I'm playing them as well. I've got a nice healthy bend in that rod, but I'm keeping it nice and low. So you can see already that fish is coming up to the top. Oh, it looks a bit of a wobbly one, Rich. Well, that's nice, mate, isn't it? Look at that. Ooh. It does look a big one. I'm going to concentrate a bit on this. I know I like waffling, but I'm going to concentrate on this. We don't want to, uh, this to fall off. Incidentally, I'm proper old school. I use bat wine, but I'll have the drag set as well. So obviously, when they're under your rod tip, certainly on here, because it's shallow water, uh, you heard it, heard it clicking then. Certainly on the area, it's shallow water. They do get a bit angry. You tend to waddle them in for a bit first, and then they'll go off on a bit of a run. See, he's snared off on a bit of a run. Just bending out a bit to the left. Now, you're going to have to excuse me. Well, I stand up a little bit, because I can't get the right angle on it here. With all this vegetation here, I want to keep my rod low to the side and bring it right back, but I can't get that right, ang right angle on it, so I'm just going to stand up and give it a bit more teddy. I'm not feeding anything, I'm forgetting to feed and everything, how dare I? But yeah, literally, I didn't even have a chance then to sink the line. I've literally cat catapulted the pellets in, chucked it over the top. I'm going to sit down, chucked it over the top and it's gone straight away. It's a nice fish. And this is why it's so important to, to fish heavy. Keep checking that drag because it might have a bit of a shoot off. Ooh, he looks a nice one. Looks about four pounds, which you see in them, mate. So I'm going to bring it onto the to my preferred side of netting him. Got a nice long landing that handle on. Nice four metre one. And a nice deep net as well. Look at him. So he's ready. So you see I'm keeping it low. When you see him like that, bring it high. And then we can wobble, wobble him in. Oof. Not bad for the first fish, is it? That's why these tactics are so devastating. And water's like this. Let's get him in. That's a proper one, that. That's a good... Good two and a half, three pound that. Look at me, I can't help but feed, can I? Incidentally, rod is uh, trapped under my leg, so I'm keeping a nice tight line, so when I bring this fish into my lap, the trouble with having a fine tip is it will tangle if it's slack, so I'll keep it nice and tight, and then you can bring these big fishes in like that. Oof. Mate, are we having a close-up on this, Rich? He's a lovely one, him. Let's get that in there. Let's put this over here so I can give you lovely people 
a look at this big wobbly carp. This is what we come to Barston for. This is what it's famous for. Get that over there. Let's get it turned down, Rich. Look at this bad boy here. Jacking will behave. Jacking he will. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Look at that beauty. Oh, he's going to go. He's going to go. Let me wiggle him round. Look at that. That's probably what? Eight, nine pounds. Did you give me a double, maybe? All spawned out. Beautiful. Let's... Uh, Let's get him in the net. We're not going to keep the fish in the net for, for long today. Literally going to release him every sort of like 90 minutes, I would have thought, that's all. Let's get him wobbled in and let's catch some more. Beautiful. See, I do know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay, so just had that big wobbly one. And as promised, I'll talk you through the bombs. Now, this is probably one of the lightest ones you can get. It's real light one. So it's replicating sort of two plops. So... Again, what I'm doing is I'm feeding the pellets first, casting over top. So I've got that plopping down and then the pellet behind it coming into play. I want to sink my line, obviously, because it's only really light. I don't want to leave it floating because there's not much wind on, but if the wind gets up, which is susceptible on these big open waters, it's going to move sort of my bomb out of place, which, you know, it's keeping that tight line so the fish will look themselves. But when you're getting them sort of like little touches in that, which the big fish sometimes will give you, you need to make sure you're direct to the bomb. So what I'll do, I'll cast in, sink the line and then get ready. Now, again, same with the method. Uh, I'm not going to leave it in for long because the whole nature of sort of this style of fishing when you're on the bomb or the waggler is your bait's not going in a like, real compact area. It's over sort of a big area. So if I'm not getting liners or anything like that on one spot, I'm going to chuck a bit to the left, bit to the right, bit further out. Just trying to pick them fish up, basically. So coming back to the actual pellet now. So I've just had that fish. Now, you notice, getting on that pellet there, Rich, the pellet's all roughed up. What I don't like to do is fish with the same bait and I like to change my bait every time so it's as fresh as possible and it looks like the ones that obviously you're pinging in. So we'll have that one off and we'll get a new one back on. Especially it's important when you're fishing sort of through the water, you know, with a waggler. If you're leaving that pellet on, it's going to take on the water, it's going to fall quicker than your loose feed, so just bear it in mind. Right then, I'm going to have another cast in. So, first thing I'm going to do, same with the method, leave that bomb in there. I'm going to give it a double pouch. One, two, and then nice and quick, I'm going to come back with this bomb and get it there, thereabouts, right where them pellets are landing. So, I mean, literally, this is what I was doing with that, that fish I had last time, and, it, and it's gone straight away. I'm not repeating it now, though. How dare it? Well, now it's a lovely start on that. And it just, just goes to prove, you know, uh, the thing with that method, sometimes it can be absolutely deadly other times. It, you know, especially if you're on a little bit of silt and that, and it might be sinking into it, or, you know, the mix might not be right. Jay might have real good success on it with his pellets. Um, but it's, it's just a case of, like, if something's not right, you can visibly see fish there. That's sunk now. You can visibly see fish there, then obviously it's pointless staying on something that's not working. So a quick change like that over to the bomb, and as I say, it's gone round straight away. Now, it might be that I, I, I might need to change uh, bomb size. I might need to go on a slightly bigger one, like... Where's it gone? Like this one. It's a slightly, uh, slightly heavier, bigger bomb. If I'm getting them little touches, but nothing's resulting in proper bites, I might have to put a heavier one on so that when the fish feel the resistance to that bomb, they hook themselves. But, you know, I, I do like to fish these real light bombs. I, I do think they make a big difference. So, why don't you... Leave me alone to empty some more great biggins out and uh, go and have a look what Jay's doing. Should we go and have a look what Jay's doing, Rich? I think we should, mate. I think we should. Oosh, and we're in again. You going, Rich? So, again, second chuck. After how dare I told us to go and have a look what Jay's doing, I thought, you know what? Just hang on a minute, Rich. We're getting a few liners and he's gone round again straight away. Now this is the beauty, I don't know if you can get that angle in on that rod. This is the beauty of these soft rods, it cushions everything. Gone are the days, I think, personally, of using these big sort of like, not so much barber rods, but heavy, heavy tip rods, big feeder rods. It's, it's just wrong in my opinion, because you're putting so much pressure on that fish, especially with it being shallow water, you're far better off fishing nice light soft rods so that it cushions everything. Especially when there's lots of skimmers in here, skimmers and bream up to sort of four or five pound, and, you know, obviously, if you're fishing too heavy for them, you're just going to be pulling out of them. Oh, 
that's lovely this Rich, you're not having a go you know, you're not having a go. So I've tightened that drag down but as I say I'm proper old school, I'm using back wind, I'm just going to get some more baiting. So I've got that nice angle on that rod. Wind down to the maximum. I've already loaded the catapult up. Keep pulling and then just keep that bait going in. Lovely. So I think we made the right decision, didn't we? Tinned into that bomb. It's a light, light bomb. There's a lot of anglers shy away from them. They go to heavy ones. Obviously, it's the fish going up themselves, but the amount of sort of indications that you can see, and obviously, you're still going to be catching fish through the water because obviously, it's not going to settle really fast like a heavier bomb would do. Oh, this is lovely. Love me rod and line fishing. So you can see like that bending that rod, it's cushioning absolutely everything. I'd imagine it's going to go a bit wobbly, a bit nuts in a minute when we get it under the rod tip. But we'll try and snare him straight away. Feels another nice one. Oh, he's only a babby rich. Only a little baby one. Right, so he's on that right side. So nice long landing that handle. You can try for the same again. So bring him up through the layers, and he's there! So, bring the fish back to your lap first. If you can do, it's a bit of a wobbly one, this one, mate. It's bigger than the last one. What's going on? Right, nice and nice under tension, under the leg. And we'll get this one. What kind of size of that one, Rich? Oh, that's a good 12 pound, that one. I think this is uh, worthy of the photographic opportunity, this one. I think we'll be having a show of this one. Let's get that out of there. Got to put some pellets in again, haven't we, as well? Got to put some pellets in. Right then. Are we ready for this one? Let me bring that round there a little bit again. Are we ready for this one? Beautiful. Look at that. That's a beauty of the bast and the fish are absolutely incredible. Look at that. That's a double, isn't it? That's what? That's 10, 11 pound, that one, isn't it? Lovely. Nice mirror, nice common. We just need, just need an ornamental now, don't we? And then we've done the lot. Jay will probably get first ornamental now with him now. Oh, beautiful. Go on, he's not even coming at me now, he's that big. Yeah, 